And the experiment I'd like to show you today is to see if we can get a balloon to inflate without actually blowing any air into it at all. I call this the self-inflating balloon experiment. Have you ever noticed that when you fly abroad and you take food with you, particularly things like crisp packets, that when the aircraft's flying high up, you notice that they seem to grow in size. They seem to bulge outwards and look as if they've been pumped up with air. And that physics is the same physics we're going to use uh, when we do the experiment with the self-inflating balloon. So the apparatus I need for this experiment is a balloon. And what I've done is I've blown it up a tiny amount and then sealed the end. So it's completely sealed, rather like the crisp packets in the aeroplane. I've got a glass bell jar here. I'm just going to put the balloon inside it and I'm going to connect it via this rubber hose to a vacuum pump. And what the vacuum pump's going to do is it's going to reduce the air pressure inside the bell jar. And uh, when it does that, let's see what happens to the balloon. So what I hope you can see is happening is the balloon seems to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It seems to be sort of pumping itself up. Um, this is rather unusual because clearly the balloon's sealed and can't have any more air getting inside it. And this is exactly what happens to the crisp packets when you fly higher and higher. But what we can do, of course, is switch off the vacuum pump and let some air back in. And now the air is going back into the bell jar and the balloon, even though it's sealed, is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. We'll let a bit more air in and it's back to its original shape. So let's try and explain this. When we're at ground level, there's air inside the balloon. There's also air on the outside of the balloon and there are atmospheric pressure. In other words, the same pressure. So the particles hitting the outside of the balloon, forcing it inwards, are counterbalanced equally by those on the inside, forcing it outwards. But as we go up in the plane, the pressure inside the plane reduces um, to less than one atmosphere. And so the pressure pushing on the outside of the balloon is not as large as that inside. So the particles on the inside of the balloon force the balloon outwards. Uh, of course, when you come into land, the pressures equalise and that's what causes the balloon to shrink back to its original shape. So it's this process that causes the crisp packet to grow and if you don't eat it, shrink when you come into land. I've also seen the tops of yoghurt pots um, actually uh, lift right off if the pressure in the plane gets too low. Reminds me of a friend of mine who heard a huge explosion in the back of his small plane uh, wondering what it was and immediately did a forced landing only to find out that the large Easter egg he was carrying had actually exploded because it wasn't flexible and the air pressure outside was much lower than inside the Easter egg and instead of leaking air gently it had actually gone bang and thrown bits of chocolate all over the back of the aircraft. He certainly looked quite embarrassed when he had to explain why he'd done a forced landing. So what I thought we'd do is repeat the experiment with a large piece of bubble wrap, the sort of stuff that they wrap parcels in to keep them safe whilst they're being carried to your house. And um, give some thought to what happens here and why it happens. And also think about what happens to your ears when you fly high in an aeroplane. You can see that the uh, bubble wrap is growing and growing in size. Uh, sometimes if it's very weak, it will actually explode and um, completely leak. But of course, sometimes when the pilot decides to come down very, very quickly, the pressure in the plane increases quicker than you think it's going to. And this happens. The air rushes in and your eardrums get crushed inwards, as it were. And it's that pressure that causes your ears to ache on landing and takes you a while to re-equalise. So I hope you've got a better understanding now of why your ears might hurt when you go up in an aeroplane or particularly when you go down. I hope you enjoyed that experiment and I look forward to seeing you next time.